Ever wondered what the entity actually thinks of the killers in-game? Does it like them? Does it hate them? Or is it somewhere in between? Hey everyone, today we're going to discuss those very questions. To discern the entity's opinion, we can look to the lore, the add-ons, the perks, and things like flavor text too. All of these things can help to build a decent picture on what the entity thinks about the characters. Dredge is a tough one to read, and it's hard to even understand how it got into the realm to begin with. It's one of the most mysterious characters, not being humanoid in any way, and instead a floating mass of limbs and flesh. Dredge does have entity-based perks such as Dissolution, allowing it to break pallets without needing it to be there directly. However, a big case against it is Nightfall. During Nightfall, Dredge becomes undetectable, a thing that supposedly cuts the entity's ties briefly. Nightfall lasts a long time too, and shrouds the entire realm in a dark fog. Therefore, this is either either allowed by the entity, or Dredge simply does it regardless. In the lore, the Nightfall effect does sound stronger too, which means the entity has definitely nerfed it down already, but regardless may not be able to entirely control its will. To me, this likely makes it very cautious of Dredge, and the potential it has to mess with the realm, even if for now it is mostly behaving and following its rules. Let's not forget, after all, the Dredge did consume Maurice, which I kind of doubt was something the entity wanted especially after the entity helped Maurice by giving him a third eye. The Dredge is definitely a character it has its eye on, or eyes on, it probably has a lot of eyes. <laughs> Blight is a character I get the sense that the entity doesn't favour all too much, with Talbot initially sort of getting into the realm through persistence rather than it being the entity's desire to begin with. After he does get into the realm, he's thrown to the void, and only when he escapes does he really embrace his role as a killer. It makes me think the entity probably isn't the biggest fan of Blight, with some add-ons even making direct reference to this. It likes to mock him. I can't imagine it gets much emotion off him too, because he looks very far from sane these days, after all the experiments he has performed on himself. I almost see Talbot as existing in the realm because the entity almost respects the hustle of escaping the literal void. <laughs> After him falling down there, he managed to be one of only a few people to actually escape, so the entity's just like, fair enough bro. The one reason why he does drop, however, is probably because of how he messes with the other killers when he goes around every Halloween, injecting them with the Blighted Serum. The serum completely alters them in some cases, and may even change the amount of emotion they create and such. Therefore, I think Talbot is on a thin line, and always just escapes, before it makes the entity too angry. If we look at perks like blood favor as evidence for the entity's favor, I actually tend to think these things are more to encourage him to follow the rules, which he so frequently breaks, with the description almost sounding like it wants to encourage him to attack the survivors, rewarding him for doing so. He's treating him like a toddler. <laughs> In the case of Undying, it sort of sounds like this ability has come purely from some sort of experiment or deeper understanding of the entity and how the realm works, which which to me sort of poses a threat, if anything, to the entity, that Talbot has actually managed to manipulate the hexes to last longer than they are meant to. A defiance of sorts, I would say. But hey, that's just my read there. Myers is a character we have very little idea about when it comes to how he got into the realm. There's lots of theories on how it happened, but ultimately we don't actually have a definitive answer. He might have broken in somehow, he might have followed Laurie in, he might have just been taken directly, we really don't know. Every one of his perks have obsession-related abilities, which may suggest some entity favour. The big argument against this, however, is that Myers Mori survivors sometimes with use of his tombstone add-ons. This would cut the trial short and result in less emotion being created, suggesting that it's disobeying the entity. Equally, we could see this as the entity allowing Michael to do this, in which case it might actually favour him more than the others. It's sort of how you read it, I suppose. I personally think it's funnier if he just wandered into the realm and now the the entity is just kind of stuck with him. <laughs> he creates enough emotion to warrant not being voided, but still tends to just do his own thing regardless of the rules. After all, pretty much the whole point of Myers and what makes him scary is that he doesn't have a motive, and his goal is to simply kill. Therefore, I think the entity is sort of just content with him, accepting him for what he is, but not necessarily liking it or disliking it. 
He could really float between the different categories depending on the day, I think. Executioner, I think, is sort of a similar deal to Myers. The main difference here is that Pyramid Head was most definitely invited to the realm and accepted the invitation. However, much like Myers, he also has mores that end the trial sooner, and even stabs his blade into the trial grounds, which could be seen as almost painful for the entity potentially, as the trial grounds themselves are likely made up of entity matter, or the auric cells. This is all just sort of interpretation though, and one way to look at it. The other way is to see it as the entity allowing all this. Some of the eerie add-ons too suggest the entity is sort of vibing with Pyramid Head's goals and loyalties. In terms of the theory of Pyramid Head punishing the entity itself, it's possible if this is the case it doesn't even mind it. Maybe it's even into it. No, probably not. Much like Myers, I imagine this defiance is more just something the entity accepts as part of the package. The entity did ask him to join it after all. It's true, it might have gotten more than it bargained for, but I think it's probably just content with him, although maybe has a cautious eye on him. Or, again, eyes. Pro probably a lot of eyes. <laughs> Demogorgon is a tough one to judge, with it being the only killer to be removed from the realm completely and return back eventually. If we look for an in-law reason, maybe the mind Flayer wanted it back, and the entity had to comply. Whatever the reason for Demo leaving though, it did return. Demo also has perks that suggest entity favour, such as Cruel Limits, which blocks off all vaults map-wide. A pretty strong ability. Maybe the entity fears the Mind Flayer to some capacity, or at least knows it should treat one of its creatures with good care, because it does have potential to at least damage it in some way. This wouldn't exactly mean the entity likes the Demogorgon though, but is more putting up a front to make it look like it is, for the purpose of appeasing another otherworldly entity. It depends how you view it, I guess. I think Demo could float between a few categories, really. Discontent with them. Huntress is a bit of a wild card, and her perk Beast of Prey sort of outlines this, saying her lust for a kill is so intense that she briefly cuts off from the entity's connection. This is a clear moment of not really defiance, but a moment where she's able to just ignore the entity's wishes, which it probably doesn't like. She equally has Territorial Imperative, a perk closely tied to the basement, which is sort of the entity's heart within the trial grounds. This kind of suggests a bit of back and forth between the two, where she can be extremely close and tied to the entity's goals, but then suddenly completely refusing and too zoned in to care. This likely makes her float between the categories a bit, with her losing connection with the entity only being a brief thing. A character the entity can't control briefly though is surely something it does not like like so I'm going to place her fairly low down here. Doctor, I think, actually isn't liked that much by the Entity, but does see him as a good asset for causing fear in the survivors. Doctor does definitely gain joy from what he does, but there's equally a lot to suggest that much of what he does is very analytical and logical over being from emotion. His add-ons are all files and studies, and seem to affect his in-trial performance based on what he's just read. This sort of suggests to me that he's more just interested in his own goals, really, and executing experiments as he sees fit, only really adhering to the trial rules because he has to. He's a bit of a loose cannon it seems, and his goals aren't always to cause as much emotion as possible, but simply experiment in the ways he sees fit. His two chess piece add-ons do sort of suggest a bit of favour though, that the entity is supportive of his goals and experiments also. Therefore I sort of think Doctor floats between a few of these categories depending on the day. Again, I think quite a few characters like this. Content with them. Xenomorph is a creature the entity is likely just content with. It does its job, more so out of survival than an understanding or servitude, but it does it regardless, which is all it really cares about, I imagine. Its perks don't necessarily suggest entity favour, so I think the entity is more just content with the Xenomorphs, knowing it can control them easily. Trapper is one of the few characters we have direct evidence for disobeying the entity, with him seen to be straight up fighting its claws in a mobile cutscene. This is like likely down to how torn Evan is as a character, often choosing the bad option, but clearly being torn when making it. This means he's also probably favoured by the entity though despite his defiance. He's a character that's very torn and emotional and therefore a perfect fit for the trials. Admittedly he may still be a nuisance for the entity to deal with, but not to the extent I think of him being discontent with him. Trapper has been here from the start and was carefully picked by the entity. The fighting between the two is maybe even part of the plan, with the entity 
entity sort of filling the father figure role within the realm, this role being the thing that caused so much conflict within Evan to begin with. So even though it looks like defiance, it could very well be sort of structured defiance, or planned defiance, whatever way you want to phrase it. Pig is a character in a good spot for the entity, as she's someone who believes she's meant to be here as part of Jigsaw's plans for her. This likely makes her very loyal, but doesn't necessarily mean the entity likes her. Amanda tends to like to rig her own trials, and the entity generally wants the matches to be drawn out more, and actually have the potential to be fair, which might cause a bit of a divide. The entity also seems to sort of use the same tactic on Amanda as it does with twins, constantly reminding her through her add-ons of all the bad things that went down for her to remember. I sort of get the idea that it's just content with her, but might see her as a bit of a nuisance with her wanting to do things differently. She went against Jigsaw's word, so it's pretty likely she'd do this with the entity too. Nemesis is a character the entity simply likes, I think. It's a fairly mindless BOW that will follow the entity's orders and do as it says. It seems to sort of reward its loyalty and its add-ons, and generally seems to view it favourably. Perks like Lethal Pursuer are also quite good indications, I would say, of the entity's favouring of him, literally just revealing immediately where the survivors are. A good worker in the entity's eyes, I think. Chucky is a character I think the entity is just pretty happy with. He has some perks that maybe suggest some kind of favour, but as a whole, I think Chucky's here to show a different form of horror, being a doll. He further enjoys what he does, which likely benefits the entity too. The entity also sort of reassures him by providing him with a new amulet in the realm, which is what allows him to resurrect himself and transport between bodies. A sign of trust, I would say. Singularity initially comes into the realm down to pure hatred for Gabriel, who he chases into the fog. The entity does seem to want to accomplish accommodate Hux, however, and likely sees him as an opportunity for a unique type of horror for the realm. In the realm too, Hux definitely plays his role of the killer well, clearly hating humans and wanting to get rid of them by any means. For these reasons, I think Hux is probably favoured at least. Hux is able to be controlled easily too, because you can quite easily just remove the crystal from him, which would revert him back to his regular AI. Wesker is a tough one to judge, and whilst I don't think he's entirely down with the realm, I do think he probably is favoured by the entity. He has a desire to hunt the survivors and is a scary character to face. A clear indication of entity favour too is in the add-on Iridescent Ouroboros Vial, which is said to be the perfect bioweapon. This sort of seems like a reward to Wesker, and almost a gift for his servitude. An easy way to gain his favour maybe, but also potentially a sign of respect, and a favour sent his way for him participating in the trials. The thing Wesker was always seeking. I think ultimately the the entity likes him, but I don't think he entirely likes the trials, but does put up with them and participate nonetheless, and likely partly down to his massive ego and his need to constantly inflate it by hunting down the survivors who he views as lesser. Deathslinger has Deadman Switch, a perk that can call upon the entity after hooking a survivor. I think this is an interesting one, because it sort of requires him to adhere to the trial rules before being rewarded, which does show favour, but maybe a sort of hesitant amount. Slinger's main goal within the realm, I think, is to simply let out his anger and get his perceived revenge. Based on what we read in the lore too, it appears that the entity manipulates what Caleb sees to make it look like he actually views the survivors as people who did him wrong in his past. I think a lot of these things sort of suggest a sort of distrust in Caleb, and the need to sort of manipulate him to make sure he always complies with the entity, as Caleb prior to entering the realm does seem slightly hesitant. I I think overall though it is still favourable toward Caleb, but as the master manipulator it is, it's also absolutely manipulating and deceiving him almost always. Twins are likely characters the entity favours to a decent degree. They are quite easy to control, with it having the constant threat of taking Victor away, making them loyal. This is mainly why they serve it I think, because it brought Victor back and can take him away at any time, leaving them in a constant emotional state of fear to perform well. It doesn't necessarily scream that it likes them, but more just that they're very easy to control, and for that, maybe does. The add-ons they use are all sort of tools to remind them of their past, and 
reignite their anger. Overall, this probably makes the entity just content with them, with it probably having to routinely sort of prod them to remember their past and get angrier than they might otherwise be. Freddy seems favoured by the entity, with it able to change his powers, tempering them and enhancing them in different ways, and having no sign of defiance. Freddy further has Blood Warden, a perk that shows clear entity favour with its ability to full-on block off the exit gates, which is an ability not present elsewhere really within the realm. The entity seems to understand Freddy well, and knows how to get him to serve it likely making it favour him. The only reason we have to doubt this really is how Freddy constantly gets nerfs within the realm, and for much of his time in the realm has been one of the weakest in trial characters. I guess we can maybe take that as some evidence for him not being very liked. He can sort of float between categories depending on that I guess. I think the entity does like him though at minimum, content with him. Skull Merchant is another character I think the entity likely just sees as a useful asset, and therefore is pretty okay or content with her. She has a few obsession perks, which maybe shows some favour too. She further even gets sort of a mini bloodlust type effect for the survivor who is managing to outrun her the best, with her perk, Game of Foot. This sort of shows the entity likes her, I think. Like an additional boost actually likes them. Cenobite is a character which the entity is maybe a little torn on. On one hand, it's gotten a powerful being to come to the realm and participate in the trials. The Cenobites don't necessarily pose a threat to the entity directly either, with the entity clearly able to manipulate the Lament configuration to its will. The Eerie Lament configuration is a version of the box moulded from the fog, showing that the entity is capable of actually replicating the box itself and all its complexities, further stating that it provides provides new powers. So basically the entity took the box, gave it a cool paint job and new powers, then handed it back to the Cenobites. This in part shows it favours them I think, but also that the power difference here is quite substantial. It isn't scared of them, and for that probably likes them more too. Further, Pinhead has the perk Deadlock, which can cool upon the entity to block a generator. They further have every unique perk version available, having both a Hex and a Scourge Hook too. Altogether this makes me think the Cenobites are pretty loved by the entity, and there's even an amount of respect between them potentially. The entity is grateful to have them, and they are happy to be there. Clown appears to have a good amount of entity favour, with him able to cool upon the entity when vaulting windows with his perk Bamboozle. He further just aligns a lot with the entity's goals. He has a few inner conflicts, but is undeniably loyal. The entity also shows some extra favour toward Clown when he enters the realm. Maurice gets burned upon the entrance, losing his sight, and yet the entity restores it with a third eye. A pretty compassionate action for a spider god. I think this is a good indication that the entity likes the clown. Oni is a character the entity openly mocks, with its placement of the Oni mask upon him. However, this doesn't mean he dislikes him, and if anything, he probably does like him. The Oni is responsible for the downfall of the Yamaokas, and has a lot of guilt to go with it, making him perfect for the trials. He's also the reason the entity managed to get spirit also, making it happy with Kazan more than likely. The entity likes to play around with Kazan's emotions, evident in his add-ons, and it again placing an Oni mask onto Kazan, which is something he hates. Just because Kazan probably doesn't like the entity though, doesn't mean the entity doesn't like him. The fear Oni spreads, and the inner conflict within, and guilt at what he led his family to, and what he became, are all things that make him favoured probably. This on top of the fact that he caused Rin's eventual arrival to the realm. It's worth noting too that that Oni's anger isn't necessarily directed at the entity, even though the entity put the mask upon him. He just seems angry in general. He may even believe to some degree that he deserves to have the mask, realising to some extent how much of a monster he has become. Trickster is a character the entity probably favours quite a bit. Trickster sees the realm almost like a big show for him to perform in, which fits pretty perfectly in with the entity's own goals for the realm. He further has multiple perks that show off his favour, a hex able to block off windows vaults, and a perk that straight up blocks the exit gates from being touched for a duration of time. Both of these are very strong effects, and show the entity does like the trickster quite a bit. It also seems able to play into his ego well, with it creating an iridescent signed photo for him, a show that the entity is sort of a fan of Jiwoon itself. Spirit has a number of very strong abilities within her perks that the entity allows. She can mori people during the endgame, she can create a unique hex trap, and she can finally have pallets straight up 
destroyed with Spirit Fury. Rin is another character who made an oath with the Entity, and does seem to honour that oath. She doesn't necessarily agree with everything going on, and has clear moments of sadness and her prior self come through, but she still obeys the Entity regardless. This conflict is likely good for the Entity too, creating a lot of emotion. It's also possible that she is being deceived, and the Entity changes the survivors to look like her father, which would explain her clear anger toward them, and why she's so compliant. This all makes her a good asset to it though, and so I think it definitely likes her. Billy is a character I think the Entity likes, and Billy is quite loyal to, as it gave him a place to be free. The iridescent engravings reveal that Billy has sort of engraved some Entity designs onto his chainsaw, or the Entity has done that for him. It seems like the type of thing that shows his loyalty and positivity toward the Entity. One big indicator too is his perk Lightborn. This perk description reads, unlike other beasts of the fog, you have adapted to the light. This definitely shows some positivity on the Entity's part, granting him the ability to be entirely immune to one of the few things that survivors have to fight back with. He further has Enduring, another tool to do this. His perk Tinkerer also originally had the effect of making your power more effective, which shows definite favour I think. Billy is loyal, causing fear, but also having a lot of built-up emotion and anger too, making him a valuable asset to the Entity. Nurse is likely quite a favoured character, being consistently the strongest throughout the game's whole history. Nurse is further able to blink and briefly enter the spirit world, a different area within the Entity's realm. This is a clear sign of Entity favour, with this being an Entity given power, it shows sort of a trust I would say. It is painful to use, but I think that's more just because the Entity wants emotion, and so isn't just giving out strong powers for free. If she's to be the realm's strongest character in the trials, and impress the Entity, then she has to suffer something too. She's further allowed her romance with the Wraith, which is in part I think to get emotion from her, and hope, but also because it wants to give her something nice for her loyalty and servitude. Hag has three hexes, which seem to allow some quite strong abilities, like blocking survivor aura reading, regressing generators, and allowing her to Mori, suggesting some good favour. The way the entity was summoned to the Hag in the first place was when she called upon it to save her. When this occurred, an oath was made, and Lisa seems very loyal to this. Lisa likely still has humanity left within her too, and is torn, but is overcome more by the stated dark hunger within her, which drives her. Overall, the Entity has some clear favour for her, I think. Wraith is a character the Entity stalked over the years, likely manipulating his life and path in order to lead him eventually to the realm. When he finally arrives in the realm, the Entity further grants him a number of things lots of other characters don't have, like a widened view perspective and tighter scratch marks to help him hunt better. He is able to use his bell, which makes him cut off from the Entity with Undetectable, but this seems to be by the Entity's own design, in this case, with it granting Wraith these abilities to begin with. Further, when he's cloaked, he's situated between the realm and another area of the realm, the Spirit World suggesting the Entity very much has control over him, and even trusts him enough to be loyal to briefly enter a different part of the realm that few even have access to. Wraith also has his romance with Nurse, which does suggest an element of trust too, and is a further means to gain emotion from him. Philip's add-ons are further all very Entity-tied and focused, each having their abilities enhanced by the Entity's power it seems, with the iridescent symbol even representing the constant watchful eye of the Entity and almost appears as sort of a respectful sign toward the Entity. That's my read there at least. A character the Entity put a lot of work into forming I think, and so ultimately favours quite a bit. The Entity's favourites. Sadako seems to have a very tight bond with the Entity, after it saved her from the well, or supposedly did at least. When it saves her, there's a moment of agreement between them, with the fog caressing the surface of the ocean, which Sadako then walks into. Sadako is also one of the most powerful characters within the realm, and so the Entity likely wants her on its side. Sadako has multiple perks that suggest Entity favour too. Her Scourge Hook mentions a psychic connection forged with the Entity, which allows an alteration to the rules of the Trials. This maybe is debatable if it's to the Entity's liking, but I would have to say it probably is, and if anything is more a case where it alters the Trials almost as a favour rather than it feeling threatened. It's a psychic connection after all, and doesn't sound threatening really. 
Finally, she further has Merciless Storm, which summons the entity to block gens. Sadako also has the Mori ability after building 7 Condemn stacks, however I tend to see this as more of a compromise on Sadako's part, as a favour to the entity, as it saved her. She still gets to enact her 7 day routine type of thing, but it just has to be adjusted for the realm, a compromise. Sadako definitely acts differently to others in the realm, but I think this is more down to a mutual respect than anything else. I do think it could be interpreted in different ways and appear to be a defiant thing. She could reasonably float between the very top to the very bottom depending on this, but I tend to think she's in the entity's favour. Knight seems quite pleased upon his arrival to the realm, and does seem to be favoured, allowed to even bring his boys along. He further has multiple perks that definitely suggest favour with a slight bending of the trial rules, and generally powerful effects to help him find survivors. His iridescent, the company banner, further allows him to block windows and even the exits at his own will too, showing a clear connection and trust between himself and the entity. An ability like that isn't just going to be given to anyone, therefore I think Knight is well liked by the entity, with him viewing the realm as a personal heaven of sorts. Legion appears to be very favoured and liked by the entity, with it literally featuring on their fuming mixtape, laying down some otherworldly beats. A pretty down-to-earth move for an out-of-touch spider god. The Legion is a case where I think they're definitely conflicted and they probably have some imposter syndrome to some degree when seeing the other killers of the realm. The entity knows it can easily control them, and they know they are likely expendable, making them very loyal. Despite this, the entity does seem to want to make them feel comfortable. The way the entity appears to bond with them is just trying to make it seem like it's one of the Legion, like, hey, I'm your newest member. It likes them purely as an asset, I think, and due to them being easy to control. Also a four-in-one deal, which which is probably nice, but also something that reveals it understands and does like them. It didn't just snatch Frank and be done with it, it realised the potential within the group as a whole. Bubba is a character the entity largely controls through fear, threatening him with his presence and even sometimes directly clawing at him and his chainsaw. It might like this as it causes more emotion with Bubba being confused, scared and angry. I think this is probably the case too. This direct contact with the entity has likely caused Bubba and it to become bonded much like he did with his family. Not necessarily bonded over a good thing, but definitely bonded. Barbecue and Chili mentions he has a deep bond with the entity. Bubba is definitely scared of it, but also as a result potentially sees it like family, with it being the same way he was treated by family making him both favoured by it and probably loyal. Ghostface is for sure one of the entity's favourites, and as you probably know, the reason for the floaty parts of his outfit is directly because of entity favour, and because it likes him. He gets a cool floaty element to his cloak. <laughs> Ghostface is described to have sharpened senses within the realm of the entity, almost like he is meant to be here and this is like his true home, where his senses peaked. He's further able to rouse the entity with thrilling tremors, calling it to block off gens, which sounds quite sensual almost as a word to use for what is happening. The entity definitely likes Ghosty and is quite likely its favourite killer within the realm, or at least, you know, like top three, because I do have others after this. <laughs> One of the favourites. Plague has clear and obvious favour with the entity, viewing it as her god and being intensely loyal to it. The prayers she does in game are likely toward the entity itself, and the entity probably likes that. In the realm, the entity is responsive to her prayers too, with corrupt occurring due to the entity's response to her prayers. A powerful ability which shows the entity's favour greatly and appreciation for her dark devotion. The iridescent seal seems to be a good add-on to represent this bond, with how it's described. Artist is a character with seemingly a lot of favour with the entity, with it dedicating likely the most time out of any of the characters to obtain her for the realm. Artist is also one of the most visually tied to the entity and its realm out of all the characters, having a crow-like form. Crows have a large tie to the realm of course, being scattered throughout the trials. Artist further has a number of substantially powerful perks, able to block gens and even rekindle tokens 
totems, the only character who can do this. Grim Embrace further mentions her servitude not going unnoticed. The artist is essentially the entity's perfect killer that it molded itself, with close and cruel manipulation, throughout her life to make her the perfect fit for the realm. For that, I think she's the entity's favourite. I do hope you enjoyed, thanks, and goodbye.